Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, do consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Now today, as the title suggests, I'm going to take you through the process of shooting a photograph of a beer bottle in this case and editing that. So we're going to show you how we set up the shot in terms of the lighting and then take you into Photoshop to finish this off. So I figured one of the best ways to show you the shooting process is to do a split screen and do a side by side shot. So we're seeing what the uh, the camera that is shooting the product is doing and then we can see what the environment is doing in terms of the lighting. So you can see me adding the lights and see what effect those lights are having on the product. But before we jump into the edit, let me just give you one quick tip before we get into that. So, you know, you got a standard bottled beverage. You'd have your label at the front with your logo and everything like that. And then you'll have your information label at the back right here. Um, for purposes of photography, especially where you're going to be backlighting the product, you're going to, be, you're going to need to take the label off. That's super important if you want light to pass through there so you can see that glow from the backlight in the, in the bottle. So any, any products like this where you're going to need that um, light to shine through then make sure that you take the label at the back off All right so if i take you through this setup real quickly we have our camera here we're using the um eos r today for shooting this and the product is sitting on black plexiglass it's a reflective surface um over here we cannot we have this sort of a key light right here this is the 120d is going through a strip box and over here for the spotlight that's going to be lighting up the front the product on the label so we have a, a snoot or snot <laughs> attached to this right here and the last light we have is this little led light right here which is just lighting our background the background is just you know brown paper nothing too crazy there okay let's start with the background lighting so the background lighting is this led light right at the back here and that is just lighting up our background as we saw earlier. So the second light we're going to introduce now is the key light. And as we can see right here, this is just bringing most of the light in this scene. This is what this strip box is doing right here in conjunction with the reflector just here, which is then reflecting most of that light back on this side. So as we can see, this reflector right here, or the softbox right here, we're doing two things. So we're lighting up most of the bottle, and we're also giving some definition on this side right here. So this strip of light on the right hand side of the bottle is just defining the shape of this bottle right here as well. And then we have the reflection on the left hand side if we just take the reflector away for a second we can see the dramatic effect that that has by just taking that away so if we put that back in place we can see where we are okay so the third light that we're going to be adding now is the one at the front which is going to illuminate the label so that's just there as we bring that in so you know you can obviously move this around to tweak the area that you want it to if affect. So if we just bring that up right about there and lock it off. What I'm going to do, as I said earlier, is to kind of take you through what the snoot does. Um, you probably don't see this a lot. And to be honest, for what it does, because it's taking up one whole lighting, this is taking up just for that spot of light is is taking away one major lighting for me or one major light fixture which is my uh, 300D. But in any case, it's quite necessary. So if someone ever tells you that you have too much light, tell them to please go away. What I'm gonna do is take away the grid from the front of the snoot, just to kind of demonstrate or show you what happens. So that's a lot of light, which is also spilling onto the background as well and illuminating a larger area at the front here. So with the grid in place, if we were to stick this back on, we just have a little more control, another level of control with respect to the lighting 
that is um, coming out from the snoot. So what would happen if we were to take this away? Well, let's have a look. Right. That is the scene without this snoot fitted. And even though this is the LED light, it gets very hot. So this is quite hot at the moment. So I'm just gonna stick that back on there. Right, and we have our lighting where we wanna be. But we also have one more light in the scene, which is gonna finish up this shot right here. And that is the backlight. Now you might have seen, you know, seen me use backlights before in different videos. But uh, if we go ahead and just turn this on, so we can see the effect of that backlight. And all that is, is an LED light just hidden out of view behind the product. And voila. Right, so we're about to open this in Photoshop. So one of the first windows that we get to is our camera raw window. And here we can make a, a lot of different changes, a lot of different edits to this image before we even go into Photoshop. And these uh, options here are akin to what you'd get in Lightroom. So you'd get all these options in Lightroom. Um, on this one, all I want to do right now on this one is, um, is for the optics and I want to use the profile correction. So you can see when I hit the use profile corrections, what it does, it corrects for the lens and the camera combination that you're using. Um, and sometimes what happens is that it causes th these dark uh, vignettes around the edges of the image. And if we just click that, then that will remove um, that vignetting based on that lens and camera combination. So we just hit that and then I'm gonna open that in Photoshop. So now we have our image in Photoshop right here. So one of the first things that I'm gonna do right here is crop this. So if I hit C on my keyboard for, as a shortcut for cropping, and I've got this constraint to the original image. I'm just gonna pull this down and get rid. If we look in the top right hand corner, we can see parts of the background, um, the clip that is holding the background together. So we're just gonna pull that in. And as it sets a constraint to the image, everything comes in at the same ratio. Just line it up just where we want it, hit enter. And there we have our image. Okay, so I'm just gonna duplicate this layer, Command J. So I've got a new layer over here. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of retouching on this bottle right here. So I'm gonna be using my, uh, my Wacom for this because it's a lot easier and a lot quicker than using your mouse. So I'm just gonna kinda take you through the key bits and I'm gonna do this really rough and ready, but um, feel free to go in. So I like to start from the top. So we see on the top here, just gonna get rid of all these scratches. And you know, you can use different tools. For example, I'm gonna use a spot heel and brush a lot on this because it's just a lot quicker using these strokes right here. But for things that are a little bigger, I like to use the patch tool. So this little hotspot right at the top here, um, to be honest, that's some scratches as well on the bottle. I'm just gonna use the patch tool. And grab that there. And just try to fix that up a little bit. But like I say, this one is going to be rough and ready. So we're gonna just go through this in quick time and I'll probably and I will probably speed up the video for you guys so you don't have to sit through this painful process but you know when you have this image zoomed in like this you're seeing everything you're seeing every detail and this is kind of one of the reasons as well why I do ask my clients to send the best copies of their products and even when they send the best copies of their products you know, before you shoot the product, make sure that it is clean. Sometimes you just can't get rid of everything and that's just, that's just life. And that's where, that's where Photoshop comes in. And doing photography is a lot less or a lot more forgiving rather than if you were doing video. Because to do this on your video, ooh, can, can get quite technical with it, you know? So as you can see, I'm just going through here and I'm gonna speed this up and I'll come back to you in a second. 
Yeah, so what I'm doing here is just using the spot healing brush, by the way, and just going through, go, going over these scratches and, and, um, and just getting them out. What we have right here is a bubble in the label and we can just get rid of that just like that. We've got a couple more over here. Sample that area up there. We're gonna move down with this one. Um, this is not a retouching tutorial per se. I'm just gonna show you, showing you the kind of things that you might have to look out for. But there's lots of tutorials on YouTube about how to retouch and use all these different tools. So we aren't looking bad here at all. So we're gonna look at the image overall and you're just gonna look at it and, and see what draws your attention or what catches your eye and takes you away from the bigger picture. So let's do a before and after. I'm just gonna zoom back in a little touch. Let's do the before and after. So that's the before and that's the after. And like I said, you can spend some more time and finesse this retouch a little bit more. And the thing with this is that once you get rid of the big spots, then you start seeing the little spots and then you get rid of the little spots and then what? you start seeing the micro spots. So you can be here really all day just retouching something like this. So one more thing I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna just uh, duplicate this layer again. Um, one thing I wanna fix over here is this dark area we can see on the, on the top right hand corner. And that is where we fell short with the lighting, I suppose, of, of the background. So we can kind of fix that up if we just sample this area using the brush tool, I'm at 30% and then I'm just going to apply a couple of brush strokes here to just lighten that up to bring it back in line with sort of the rest, the rest of the frame right here. Um, what else can we do with this image? Okay, let's zoom in here. What I want to do is kind of make sure that this label pops a little bit more and for that we're going to be using a curves adjustment tool. So with the curves adjustment, I'm just gonna bring this up slightly, right? So what that's doing is affecting the whole image. And that might be good because that's probably what you want, but let's just turn it off and on. You know, that could work if that's what you wanna do. But what I wanna do in this in this case really is I'm gonna invert this mask. This mask. But what I wanna do in this case really is that I'm gonna invert this mask command I like I say you can learn a lot of this stuff in uh, in Photoshop if you're not yet familiar with it so now I've inverted the mask so it's not applied and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint through the mask so it can reveal um, the adjustments that was made earlier so I'm just going to paint around here with a soft brush and we are at 30% uh, opacity so I'm just going to just give the label some attention and then we can turn this off and we can see what we've done just at the front. We just brought it up ever so slightly, right? And then we can even, with that in place, bring it up even further to see the effect it would have on there. You can turn it on and off and we can see the label just pops a little bit more. So that is actually looking good from my end and that is where I'm going to leave this image here today and like I said we can go in and we can tweak a lot more. We can mess around with the colors. I mean this is looking pretty good straight out of the camera and if I can get it right in camera 100% of the times I really will. But um, like I say that is straight out of the camera. That is how it looks. Just a little bit of uh, a retouching on, on the front of this um, with a label as well and that is that. And that about sums it up for today's video guys. If you did find this video useful in any way or found any value in it do make sure to hit that like button leave a comment below let me know your thoughts about the video make sure you subscribe and all that good jazz if you haven't already done so and i'll see you guys on the next video peace